And here we go. Tonight we're talking about the A6 Glide Ride 3, another edition of the Glide Ride. We have the 1, the 2, now the 3, and of course the Glide Ride Max, which in the upper right hand corner talked about that shoe not too long ago. Very, very, very exciting shoe. And here is the shoe that came just before the Max. And oh man, oh man, do not discount this one. This is last year's super awesome long run shoe. It's got all kinds goodies in here and we're gonna jump right into it with the full review of the glide ride three oh man a6 is just <laughs> they're just so on top of their game y'all all right so let's actually this is just a luxury cruiser shoe and we're gonna start right here with the laces all right some nice plush laces that are a little bit on the oval side they do kind of compress down but they have just enough plush to work very nicely with this very very luxurious and like dessert like plush tongue y'all oh my gosh and there's not too much spacing going on with the eyelet chain it is just the right amount where the laces and the tongue and the upper and everything else about this shoe just screams miles 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 you are going to put this on and you are going to autopilot your way into freedom i'm telling you right now and just before we even get into the price this shoe because now the glide ride max is out is on sale at a lot of different places so even though we're talking about it now it can be had for a discounted price so the tongue the tongue of the shoe we just mentioned it it is a duly gusseted on both the medial and the lateral sides of the shoe very nice plush not super duper ventilated tongue but it but again it's just so so comfortable on the top of the foot you can't really even feel the laces they definitely are not biting into the into the top of the foot you know this is not a shoe that I am you know really wrenching the laces tight and i'm not having a bunch of folding and carrying on and scrunching of the tongue um, or migration for that matter it is thick enough and it works so good again so well with the laces that there's not a shifting left and right and so it, it can get a little sparky it can get a little zesty uh whenever you get up to speed so so not to think that this is a you know super duper slow shoe but it is something to be reckoned with but again you know the main goal is nice long cruisy cruisy miles here having a look at the upper it's not a super duper stretchy upper but you know uh, it's a very very luxurious feeling soft to the touch especially on the inside um, not the most ventilated upper that I have felt in 2024 but it was very very comfortable uh, we're getting into you know uh, kind of this blend of cold in the morning and then warm the evening days around here and and I tried it in both different conditions and um, it felt okay. You know, with the right socks, it'll be okay. In fact, thinking about that, uh, this shoe can be kind of an in-between seasonal shoe. It can be a hot weather shoe and it could also work for a cold weather shoe. You can always interchange the socks, you know, uh, fit true to size for me, size 11. And I did have a little bit of extra room, just mentioning the fit there. Um, for my narrow foot, it did not feel um, very, very tight. Um, you know, I think that a, a person with a wider foot could actually do well in the glide ride three just thinking about our wide-footed friends out there now moving around to the heel collar the heel collar is all about structure there's all kinds of cushion going on there's a very large shelf right here right here where the the heel pocket is and that heel bone just sticks right here in this big old pocket here uh, and once you arrive at that part here there is not a whole lot of cushion way way down here as far as the actual uh, material of the shoe goes but you can see this bumper of the upper piece of the midsole kind of acting as a recipient that plus you know the insert here works to control the heel once the heel bone does land it is nice and secured by these little wings here you got some on the medial side and some on the lateral side and it does curve around and create this cup this heel cup if you will for this 
posterior of the shoe. So you've got a nice stiff heel counter, lots of cushion on the top, nice secure heel bone, lots of this FF Blast Plus to secure your uh, heel in. So I did a little bit of midfoot strike. I did a little bit of forefoot strike. I did a little bit of heel strike. And I think that the shoe really sings um, more towards that, like kind of uh, midfoot posterior towards the heel and also the rear foot landing. Um, I feel that this shoe did really, really well with that. Um, not as good as the heel strike on the Glide Ride Max though, um, but I still think that it definitely held its own as far as the ride goes for the Glide Ride 3. Okay, getting into the toe box, you know, this is not the world's biggest toe box. It didn't feel, you know, very, very constrictive, but it not, did not feel super duper roomy either. Um, that said, I did not feel, you know, any restrictions on my toes. It, again, fit true to size. For me, it didn't feel short or, or painful, um, but there was definitely a nice snug feeling that was not too sloppy uh, or too roomy. And that was mainly in the toe box. But again, going back to the wide-footed uh, folks out there, I think you still will be okay. So having a look at the insert of the Glide Ride 3 coming on out, it's not, you know, um, a very, very structured insert. It doesn't really have a ton of materialing as far as the sides go, um, but it does have a nice rounded heel cup that works very well with the inside of the shoe and it is quite squishy. I don't know exactly how many millimeters this is, but I'd guess, you know, five to six. It's quite a lot of cushioning. Now opening up and getting into the top of that FF Blast Plus, that blue stuff here, um, again, working my way down and towards where that heel is, even without out the insert in it's still a lot of cushioning going on for that heel cup and moving into the lateral wing of the shoe where you see that ff blast plus written remember this is not the 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 top of the midsole here where my finger is is where the um, top of the footbed is and then uh, where this piece of the ff blast plus is so you have these you know delorean wings kind of keeping keeping you in check and keeping you secure on the outside and the inside and same here you know where my fingers are or where it's happening on the in, the medial side of the shoe and then of course this is where the top of the wing is here now tracking that wing all the way down it ends right about here on this side and then towards the outside the wings do kind of stop a little bit further ahead more towards the base of that fifth toe now speaking of the fit you know you do have quite a bit of millimeters as far as the insert goes so you don't really feel the protrusion of the wings but again it works to keep that foot nice and secure instead of sliding back and forth. That said, I did not feel any rolling of my foot over the sides or the pinching of that material where the insert plus my foot plus my sock plus any material here come together and, and, and potentially make a bad intersection. There was none of that. So Asics really did a good job in creating a shoe that has structure that is not impinging on the foot, but rather supporting it. Um, you know, supporting as in not letting it go back and forth, not a uh, stabilizing or stability type shoe. This is in fact a neutral shoe. Moving into the midsole, that is that FF Blast Plus. It is a very nice foam, but not nearly as squishy as the Glide Ride Max. This is the FF Blast Max on the top. And we have 40 in the rear and 34 in the front for a six millimeter drop. Now I kind of hinted at energy return earlier. So this is not a shoe that I'm expecting to, you know, pop off and have a ton of energy return, but it just felt velvety smooth the transitions from the heel moving towards the forefoot were just effortless written in the shoe it's the glide ride it's got guide sole technology there's an eva plate in here kind of stiffening the the forefoot into the toe spring really giving a nice um yeah i'd say it's an aggressive amount of meta rocker okay it's a very very you know mid-stage right here right where the balls of the toes are right here where the ball of the foot it is just really springing off and keeping maintaining the shape so thinking about plates and stabilizing units and stuff inside the shoe it doesn't always necessarily um, need to be something like a spring or something that is going to propel you but really does it 
I'll, does the shoe deform under stress, under load? Anytime you're, you know, putting your weight down and really springing off, you know, some things are just able to deflate and you lose the structure of the shoe it wears. Some stabilizing pieces, depending on where they are in terms of the ground and then the top of the footbed, your foot and then their positioning, also their material. And are they, you know, um, malleable? Like what kind of movement do they have? It relates to how much the, the foam is allowed to deform, right? And can the shoe maintain its outer rocker? Can the, can the foam maintain its shape under load and under stress? And give the shoe um, that benefit of, you know, maintaining, still being, you know, plush and cushioning and protective, but at the same time, stiff enough to allow that continuous rolling motion. And I think ASICS did a very good job in figuring out the combination. I mean, this is the third iteration. I remember the original glide ride and, you know, it was basically the same thing. If anything, I, I think that the plate was a little bit stiffer, but the point is, um, these pieces that are inside these shoes just allow for a nice external rocker rolling motion that works for some people's gates but not all so this is more of a you know loping along you know maybe not the the highest cadence count you know type uh, type gate where you know you're really really keeping your toes and feet together um, but really just kind of opening up and letting that stride go in that so you know I think that this could work for per, you know pretty much any runner but just thinking about the the type of gate pattern that it would work for those that you know have a little bit wider bigger of a stride you know and perhaps even like a heavier runner because this is this is quite a bit of shoe and we'll get to the weight here in a second but uh just thinking about who it is going to be best for and so that said let's pop it on the scale find out how much it weighs all right here we are with a men's size 11 we are at ooh, 10.7 ounces not Bad. All right, and then moving on to the household, this is the AR Plus in all oh man, so much goodness as far as the outer here. Um, not too much rubber, a lot less rubber than some of the other shoes. They really did a good job in being very strategic about how the rubber is placed in certain key areas, especially the heel and the midfoot. And then they really did a good job in eliminating excess rubber and not having a ton of useless rubber that is just gonna add weight to the shoe very 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 sticky stuff you know um, ASICS has really gone through a decent evolution as far as their outers go these AR plus I know are just very very durable they last forever my original glide ride is still kicking around in the back and it's still going strong and not really much wear and tear on the outer so good job ASICS for choosing AR plus once again for this shoe price for this shoe I got it for a hundred and nine dollars it's uh, a discounted item and I got from the a6 website I did purchase it on my own and I think because the glide ride max is out that's kind of why it's discount will there be a glide ride for I don't know maybe the glide ride max is what took over there but that is what the shoe is running for these days get it while you can this shoe won't last forever that price certainly won't last forever and I think it's a very, very, very good shoe to have in your rotation. Something that you can really pop on. Um, I can use this for every day. I would use this for long runs. I would use this for easy recovery runs. I'm not sure if I would do a ton of tempo or speed work in the shoe. I could see it happening, um, but it's kind of on the heavier side um, and there's just a lot of shoe and it's not exactly, you know, want to get up and go. Once you do have that speed tuned in, it will follow you wherever you want to go i mean this is a bird dog of a shoe it will be on your heels <laughs> pun intended for as long as you want it to All right, everybody so that is it for the glide ride three thank you so much for tuning in we will have a comparison video a shootout if you will between the glide ride max and the glide ride three very soon my name is jason i'm a nurse practitioner in podiatry i love doing shoe reviews you know i'm a dad you know we're all about family and coffee and running shoes down here sun filled running channel not a medical channel i appreciate everybody's time feel free to like the video feel free to subscribe to the channel i appreciate everybody's time and have a wonderful night